Hello, everybody out there on YouTube. I am Jocelyn Starfeather, the founder of Sacred Planet, and I am absolutely thrilled today to bring you this presentation, which is going to be about June, July, and August 2022, and extremely powerful energies that we're going to have to work with during this time. Um, this is a huge moment for all of us. Everybody in the world is going to feel really huge changes in their lives, huge shifts on a different level, on a more um, inspiring and future oriented level than the changes that we have felt so far. Um, we've been through a lot of initiations, <laughs> you know, so far in 2020, 2021, 2022 um, to date. And so as we go forward into June, July, and August, there is this expansion that can happen as Uranus and the North Node come closer and closer together and have their conjunction at 18 degrees of Taurus. So I'm going to tell you about that. It's a major, major transit. Um, and so I just want to give you all the details, let you know all that's coming up. Now, please be sure to write in the comments on YouTube your name and location where you are listening from. I would love to hear. And also feel free to comment as you're listening to the video, anything that moves you or surprises you or that you see this showing up in such a clear way in your own life, please write it in the comments. I would love to hear. So let's go to the slideshow here and get started. And I have been wanting to make this video really for a couple months now. And I wanted to get a little bit into June um, before I recorded it so that we could have the most, you know, of the moment transmission as far as all these energies. But I've just been looking at this moment in time, especially July and August 2022. It is so big. Um, so, so let me explain more. And this is really about new adventures, new beginnings, and even bigger changes to support you. With the North Node involved, this is all extremely future oriented. This is this huge, like huge waves, like tidal waves of support coming through to help us build a new and different future. Uh, it's like, this is a moment we've been waiting for that we've been building toward. And interestingly, you know, Uranus in the North Node will be conjunct, but Mars will also be in there. Surprise, Mars is like, kind of like photobombing the moment <laughs> that Uranus and North Node have been working up to for a long time now. It's very interesting. So first of all, as we're recording this on June 11th, we are in June, 2022. Now June is a moment of calm and recentering in the midst of all the changes. And so in June, we're, we're feeling kind of a sigh of relief. We made it through the eclipse portal. <laughs> These eclipses of April 30th and May 15th and 16th were very intense. Um, as you noticed, I'm sure, and they were part of this galactic multidimensional training program that we're all in right now. We are being trained to be resilient. We are being trained to hold the calm center and hold the highest frequencies of love and oneness and to really build our strength and courage. We're being trained for this because we've got to have those skills as we move forward in building this new world, which is going to significantly um, you know, take big leaps and bounds in July and August. And we're being trained to be spiritual warriors in alignment with the Pleiades and with Sirius, the Pleiades being in the sign of Taurus and Sirius being in the zodiac sign of Cancer. I'm going to tell you more about that a little later in the presentation. So we have needed to learn these skills, how to hold the calm center, how to send out the highest frequencies of love and oneness, how to find our strength, resilience, and courage within and we needed, and again, this is what the eclipses have been bringing us in April and May, we needed to practice seeing catalyzing events swirl around us and be able to practice coming back into the heart, back into a grounded, calm space every time that we felt rocked by those events. There were a lot of like rocking, world rocking or, you know, um, emotion rocking kind of events that occurred. And we needed to go through these portals with the eclipses. I mean, this is what the eclipses are all about. Huge amounts of both light and shadow in order to be ready to fully accept and activate the opportunities that are coming next, especially in July and August. 
So now in June, we get like a little breather. <laughs> we get a little recentering, recalibration time. Um, also importantly now in June, you know, by this time, June 11th, Mercury is, is direct again. Mercury was retrograde from May 10th until June 3rd. So we're back in Mercury direct. That's important. Uh, forward motion can, can really happen again. And just incredibly huge opportunities are about to come our way in July, in August. Now, also with June, um, this is a very rare moment where Mars, Venus, and Mercury, all of these four, all of these planets closest to earth, I should say three planets closest to earth, um, which are considered the personal planets, they most heavily impact us on a, on a very personal level. We really feel this in our emotions and in our own lives, okay? Um, they're all three in their home signs. So Mars is in Aries this month, Venus is in Taurus, and starting on June 14th, Mercury will be in Gemini. These are all of the home signs of these uh, closest planets to Earth. So this is a harmonizing and balancing energy. This is the three planets uh, that have such a strong impact on us all at one time, coming back to their balancing points, coming back to the place where they can fully express, where they can fully uh, assist, you know, in, in, in what's going on, on these cosmic levels in our world. So this is really beautiful, very rare. And then we also are going to have a new moon at 23 degrees of Sagittarius on June 14th. So interesting with this new moon, uh, 23 degrees of Sagittarius is actually my rising sign. Okay. So that's for me personally, but 23 degrees of Sagittarius is the point where we had a new moon solar eclipse um, in December, 2020, that was exactly one week before the Jupiter Saturn conjunction. This was an eclipse that happened on December 14th, 2020. You can look back and see what was going on for you on that day. It was a very intense day. And one week later on December 21st was when Jupiter and Saturn were exactly conjunct. So obviously just huge, massive amounts of change have happened in all of our lives since December, 2020. So this new moon in Sagittarius, or I, I apologize, this is actually a full moon, full moon in Sagittarius um, on June 14th is asking us to look at what we have learned and how we have grown and transformed since December, 2020. And when you look at that, it's going to be significant, like your awakening process, your evolution process. Um, it, it's going to have jumped forward by leaps and bounds since December, 2020. So take a look at that, really acknowledge yourself for all that you have moved through for the initiations that you have survived um, since that time and all the ways that you have grown and transformed since December, 2020, because this full moon, and again, I apologize, I should say full moon and 23 degrees Sagittarius on June 14th, this full moon in the middle of June is really bringing us back to, to review and look at that and appreciate all that we have accomplished since then. We're also going to have Venus conjunct Uranus on June 11th. Now that's today. If you're watching this live or soon after the live recording, um, Venus is conjunct Uranus right now as we're recording this. Um, it's part of the reason I wanted to record it today because Uranus is really about like electric breakthroughs and insights and Venus is about love and beauty and bringing our highest values and integrity. It's a really wonderful lens through which to look at everything we're going to see today. And then Venus, as she continues through Taurus, is going to move forward and conjunct the North Node on June 16th. So she's, Uranus and the North Node are the, the conjunction that's happening in July and August that this presentation is especially focused on. And so Venus is already connecting these dots for us this week. Okay. Venus is, is going to be with Uranus and moving to the North node. She's already starting to like weave this new fabric together. She is setting the stage for this massive impact of this conjunction that's coming up soon. So between June 11th to the 16th, Take time, listen to Venus. This is what Venus will always be asking us to do, especially Venus and Taurus. Take time to enjoy life, to ground and center in your home. Enjoy your relationships. Go out and be social if you have the chance for that. Um, really open your heart to new possibilities. And just relax for a moment. 
Okay. We've been through so much already this year and know that where you've been feeling most stuck these last few years is finally going to move, especially in July and August. So just relax, take a breath, get ready for what's next, which is going to be really, really powerful. And Venus this month of June is going to ask us to get clear on our integrity and our most deeply held values and what these mean to us. And then during July and August, because we'll we'll be so clear on that integrity and our values, we will be ready to take those big leaps forward. I also want to say happy solstice. Many of you may watch this video near the solstice, June 21st. And so these solstices, we have the solstice on or around June 21st and then December 21st each year. And these dates, as well as the equinoxes, have long been recognized by ancient cultures and indigenous cultures as absolutely pivotal times on the wheel of the year. These are times when the portals between the worlds are open and we have tremendous capacity to connect with our guides, to connect with the earth, the sun, the moon, to connect with our ancestors and ancestral wisdom, uh, and with our own intuition and um, visionary abilities and our ancestral wisdom that we hold within. So powerful, powerful times. And these are the longest or the shortest day of the year, depending on where you are. So June 21st will be the longest day of the year if you're in the Northern hemisphere. And so we have really high energy at this time. We're feeling really able to make big things happen around this time of year, typically. Now in the Southern hemisphere, June 21st will be the shortest day of the year. And so this is a time to go within, to rest, dream, vision, let that creation process happen from within rather than more external. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere, we'll be feeling that on a more external, um, you know, really expressive, outwardly expressive level because it's the longest day of the year. Now, this particular solstice is especially future oriented. So this would be a wonderful time to set intentions for the upcoming year or the upcoming six months until the December solstice, um, because at this time we have Uranus and the North Node coming closer and closer together until they're, you know, leading up to their conjunction, which will be exact from July 31st to August 10th. And we'll talk a lot more about that in a minute, but we are leading up to that now. And astrologically, when planets are moving into a transit, when they're moving toward each other, that is, it's called applying to, they are applying to this conjunction with each other. This is really important because it's like, we're beginning to sense it. We're beginning to feel it. We're beginning to be able to work with it. And it is a building energy. It's kind of like the waxing moon energy where it is, it is increasing in its power with every day. And that's what's happening now with Uranus and the North node um, as they are, they're moving closer and closer together. And because this transit of Uranus in the North Node is slow moving and so impactful and it's fairly rare, okay, we're going to feel this strongly even now in June and all throughout July and August. So it's not limited to these dates you see here of July 31st, August 10th. It's all of July and August and and even starting now. So here's the headline event, (laughs) July 31st, August 10th, Uranus and the North Node will be conjunct at 18 degrees of Taurus. So if we take the individual pieces here, okay, Uranus, the North Node and Taurus, Uranus is about our intellect and it's very fast moving. This is like the higher octave of Mercury. When we think of Mercury being our intellectual ability and our communication ability, Uranus like lights that on fire and takes it to the next level, like in a good way, you know, it's very electric. Uranus is also about rebellion, revolution, freedom, Um, really about the new world. It's a very Aquarian planet, okay? Uh, Uranus is the the modern ruling planet of Aquarius. So this is about the new world, the next level. And Uranus brings sudden changes, unexpected events. It can be shocking and surprising events at times. And, you know, we've already been in this energy, like Uranus has been in Taurus, since 2018 and Uranus has been getting closer to the North node, you know, all for the, at least the last year, you know, we've been already starting to feel this a little bit. So we've already had these shocking, surprising events. We already have this extremely, you know, urgent sense that we're, we're on the cusp of the new world breaking through. And so this is really going to amplify and take all of that 
into a place where we can ground it and create it in a very real way with Taurus involved. So let me get to that in a minute. Now, the North Node is about the future. North Node is the direction in which we are heading collectively in highest alignment with our with our evolution, okay, with our with our most positive evolution. The North Node is very positive. Um, and it is about that which we want or tend to amplify and bring into our lives. Um, now, Taurus encompasses so much. The zodiac sign of Taurus, it really includes all that makes up our physical world. So this is the earth, our bodies, the linear reality that we operate in on the physical dimensions. Um, it includes nature and natural beauty, so trees and birds, and it includes our, our bodies on a very deep level. So about pleasure and enjoyment of this physical existence, finding bliss and, and finding bliss in simple things. Okay. Simple pleasures. Uh, it, Taurus is also very practical, sensible, stable, and it includes, and this is really important in relation to this transit here, Taurus includes that which we believe to be solid and stable. And that is part of what is going to be rocked and is going to be shaken up with this transit. Our ideas of what we, what we perceive as solid and stable are going to be very different after July and August. Um, Taurus also includes home, all right, a sense of home or your actual physical home and feeling grounded to the earth, the earth being our, our ultimate home. It also includes finances and the economy, key aspects of our physical world. So to try to sum this all up, there's a lot here that is all colliding at once with this conjunction, okay? But to, to try to sum it up, this Uranus and North Node conjunction in Taurus is about breakthroughs, revelations, and unexpected new occurrences that will be happening in support of creating a new world, new reality, and new ways of living and operating in the 3D physical realms. Now, this may include a new relationship with the Earth, a new relationship with life itself, including the life force within us, the kundalini energy, and a renewed connection with our bodies as physical temples of the soul. And so this could, can involve movement, embodiment, dance, yoga, you know, these things that, that really support the body, Reiki, acupuncture. Um, really, I, I think you will all be feeling called already by this time in June to really take it up to the next level how you are handling your health, how you are taking care of your body, how you are ensuring that your body's getting what it needs to navigate all these changes. Um, our bodies are being hit with so much as we, as we do navigate the changes of these recent years. And so it's just becoming so, so, so clear. We cannot neglect the bodies. We must attend to our body in order to be able to bring our magic and do all the things that, that we want to do in the world. Um, now, really important here, this Uranus and North Node conjunction indicates a significant change and shakeups around that which we believe to be solid and stable. Big changes on very fundamental foundational levels of our reality. Now, what this will look like, it's it's hard to say, like because with Uranus involved, it can be something very surprising, very unexpected. And Astrology can give us the themes, it can give us the archetypes, but it can't say like, usually doesn't say this exact thing is going to happen. This is why at the beginning of 2020, all of the astrologers were saying, wow, some major event is going to happen this year. It's going to be very challenging and difficult. It's going to affect everybody in the world. And it's going to take us a long time to recover from it, you know, but we, they didn't know exactly what that was it turned out to be a, a massive pandemic that we are still very much, you know, embroiled in. Um, so same thing here. We, it's, it, I'll give you on the next slides, you know, some ideas about what this could be, but it could be something that we really never saw coming. And with the North node, it has the possibility to be extremely positive. It may be something that seems really um, disconcerting or, or like just it really rocks us at the beginning, but that turns out in the long run to be an amazing shift that we deeply needed and that will bring healing and allow us to enter into completely new ways of living that are that are super aligned for the future. Um, so we have new opportunities to embody and fully embrace all of the Taurus ideals listed above, okay? 
But with Uranus involved, we must change significantly and sometimes shockingly in order to arrive at that desired future state. And this last paragraph here on this slide, I think is really the most important thing for us to know as we move through this transit. So this is just a massive opportunity for new beginnings and bringing new energies into our lives. And I really invite you to say yes to adventure and new possibilities every time that you possibly can in July and August. So write in the chat, I would love to hear, are you ready? Are you ready for new beginnings, new adventures, new possibilities? Go ahead and write in the chat. I would love to know how that moves through you. So I want to share, share how this could show up for us in our personal lives, first of all, and then we'll look at in the more big picture. So you may feel this as increased desire for embodiment practices coming into deeper connection with your body. And this could include dance, yoga, breath work, all of the things I said before may include practices involving kundalini energy or sexual energy. Okay. This life force rising energy that rises up from the earth and connects our bodies with all of the other living living entities around us, all right? Um, that could be really big during this time. Increased desire to spend time in nature and in connection with the earth. Uh, you probably are already feeling and will continue to feel even more strongly a desire to simplify, getting back to basics, minimal living, reduced expenditures, um, a focus on what we really need and eliminating what we don't need maybe smaller or simpler housing or finding a new home that's more aligned with your values, like maybe moving out of the city and into um, an area where you can be closer to, to nature on a regular basis, something like this. You may also feel upheaval in your life and in the world around you related to what we previously thought was solid and stable, now changing rapidly. And we've already been in this because the, the nodes and the eclipses have already been in Taurus and Scorpio. So this Taurus has already been hit. That which we thought was solid and stable has already been hit with the eclipses, very catalyzing events. Um, but this, it, it's going to go to some higher level. And I just want to say, I, I, again, it's hard to say precisely what these events will be, but something really big is going to happen. I just feel this intuitively so strong. And it is going to be in the long run, at least very positive for our collective future. And I do feel it's like something we never saw coming. Um, now, there will be financial and economic changes. That much is clear. Shortages, rationing, increasing supply chain disruptions. Um, the stock market and the crypto markets will see some stocks or coins increasing dramatically and suddenly in value and others will just completely bottom out. So it is going to be a, you know, more shaky time on those on those financial markets. We've been experiencing all of that already as well. So really, um, you know, reducing your expenditures, um, getting money in savings, paying off debt is it's a really good idea at this time because we definitely do have financial and economic changes coming our way. So <laughs> take all of that and now Another surprise, we're gonna just add in a touch of Mars. <laughs> um, and, and this is not the easiest energy. So Mars, we know, as I already said, Uranus in the North Node will have their conjunction from July 31st to August 10th. Well, Mars is gonna be speeding along and plant himself right in the middle of this Uranus North Node conjunction. Like I said, it's kind of like he's coming in for a photo bomb right in the center of it. So August 1st and 2nd, Mars will be exactly conjunct Uranus in the North Node at 18 degrees of Taurus. Okay, so this just takes things to a whole new level. So Mars, archetype of this planet, is very masculine energy. It's the pioneer energy, the, the one who is ready to forge a new path and doesn't care what anyone else will say. Okay. I, and, and this is visionary. All right. It, on its positive side, it's very visionary. I see Mars as the one who like is looking at the forest. There's not a path, but he knows he's got to get to that other side over there. And he's just going to bushwhack right through and just cut right through and create a new path that many others will follow later. Okay. So there's this energy of charging ahead, very fiery, this energy of making things happen, forging that new path. 
Now on the negative side, this can include war. He is, Mars is the God of war, um, aggression, conflict, outbursts, acting or speaking too soon. Um, recklessness is, is a part of this. And then again, back to the positive side, Mars brings courage, strength, resilience in the face of change. We really need that with this transit. Um, he can be very bold, like this, this is bold courage, okay, charging ahead, knowing, like, knowing I'm on the mission and I'm going to make it happen. So we need to add this Mars energy in alongside everything that we've explored already. So in with all of the Uranus, the North Node, the Taurus. So bringing this in, you may feel this as increased courage and boldness to take a new action on the new beginnings being birthed in your life. It may feel like a call to adventure, forging a new path, making decisions, taking actions in very different ways than before. Again, we got to be really open and ready for the unexpected. The unexpected is going to bring us the highest gifts throughout this transit. So we want to be really open and ready to accept new opportunities, things we never saw coming. We want to be ready to say yes, as long as it feels right to your heart and your intuition. Um, you may also feel this as conflict and discontent in your life. Maybe anger. Mars definitely helps us to express our anger. He feels a lot of anger. He helps us to express that. You could feel anger toward those closest to you, um, especially if you've kept your feelings hidden or stuffed down your feelings. That is just, the universe is just saying to us, if you've been stuffing your feelings, if you've been keeping things hidden, just stop. Just don't even try to do that anymore. It's going to be extracted from you one way or another. And so I would say, if you do have anything that you're, you're keeping your feelings hidden, you're keeping your feelings stuffed down, express it now in June to whoever is involved, whoever you need to, to share that with, to bring it out into the light and work with it. And maybe there is a little bit of confrontation, but in June, this energy is going to be much more calm and peaceful. If you wait to July and August, it's going to burst out of you and it's going to cause more damage and it's going to be more conflict. So that's my recommendation. Uh, we really, we just, we can't keep things hidden anymore. It's, it's going to be revealed and pulled out of us in some way. So do it now in June. It'll be much easier. <laughs> um, you may also feel uh, this sense of needing to break free and take reckless action, regardless of what anyone else may say or think. And actually, you know, reckless and regardless, these sound like negative words, but this can actually be very good if you've been stuck or stalled or keeping yourself hidden or keeping your truth hidden. Um, if you've been playing small, if you've known you need to get your voice out and you've been holding back, if you've known you need to break free from something, but you've been like, well, maybe I can make it work. Just let go of all that. Take this moment to break free. Take bold and courageous action during this time. Again, as long as you know in your heart that this is true and aligned with your highest integrity, go ahead and do it. You will be so supported during this time. You will have the courage. You will have the conviction. You will have the boldness to do it. Um, so this can be very, very positive for us. So how will all of this come together in the collective? And again, we don't know for certain, but here are some strong possibilities based on these archetypes of planets. So surprising events that we never saw coming, maybe around extraterrestrials, revelations of hidden information, extreme weather. There are many different ways this can show up, uh, but there will be some surprising things that we just never expected. We will probably see these continued economic disruptions, dramatic up and ups and downs of finances, as we've already been seeing. And this is really important, awakening, revolution, freedom, liberation, building a new future and a new world. This will be so strong at this time. And it's, you know, Uranus and the North Node in Taurus were already in favor of this. And then Mars is going to come in and give it this huge driving force, going to really light a fire under all of that and help us to take this bold and courageous action that we have not been able to take before. So it's pretty incredible. It's going to be really intense. It might feel scary. It might feel like, you know, stressful or anxiety-ish at the time, but it's going to be so liberating. There can be so much new freedom created. Truly, the new world can be implemented in a very real way 
with the assistance of Taurus, which makes things solid and stable and helps us really uh, ground and center what we're doing. And so this, we will definitely see in some form people rising up in support of their highest values and integrity with this feeling of it cannot go on in this way any longer. And we are finally ready to take action and make the changes happen. Um, I really hope that this will happen around environmental issues. That is my hope with Taurus being the, the zodiac sign, the foundation on which all of this is happening. I really hope that we see some massive positive changes that are kind of unexpected around how we're handling the environment and how we are treating the earth. That is my hope and prayer for this transit, among other things, of course. Um, but we really have this huge chance to use the impetus, the force of these planetary transits to create major positive change. And you may receive, experience fantastic inspiration around starting a business or breaking free from an old career. Remember, Taurus rules finances, okay? So finding new ways to earn money that are deeply aligned with your purpose instead of whatever, you know, like a soul-sucking soul old job that you've been doing for too long. You may find a way to truly break free from that and start something completely new. Uh, and there will definitely be this emphasis on embodiment, movement, self-care, our health, taking really good care of our bodies. And again here, breakthroughs related to the environment, fossil fuel use, energy use. And I do have this really strong hope that we'll finally implement some critical changes that we haven't been able to do um, in order to stop harming the earth. There is definitely too a possibility for increased war and aggression. I certainly hope that will not be the case, but with these energies of rapid change and surprising events. And with Mars, the God of war involved, this is quite a, quite a strong possibility. Uh, we do need to be aware of this and try to hold that calm center. Okay. Try to keep the peace in your own life. Cause there can be war and aggression in our lives on personal levels, as well as on the big global stage. So in any way that you can hold the energy of peace throughout this, we don't want that negative side of Mars. Okay. Around war and aggression and conflict to take over personally or collectively. So we want to really hold the highest energies of peace and calmness throughout. So here's something fascinating, which is the role of Venus in all of this. So remember, we've been talking about these, you know, all centered around 18 degrees of Taurus at that Uranus and the North Node and Mars will be moving through together. But remember that Venus is covering these Taurus degrees first in the month of June. So Venus is conjunct Uranus on June 11th. Then she moves to 18 degrees of Taurus on June 13th. Then she will be conjunct the North Node at 22 degrees of Taurus on June 16th and 17th. So she is coming through and setting the stage. She is, Venus is laying her energy down first. Okay, before the big conjunction involving Uranus and Mars and the North Node. So this is incredibly fascinating because Venus and Mars have already been engaged in this very dynamic dance since the beginning of 2022. And I recommend watching my video on the April 30th solar eclipse for more information about this, but that it is this beautiful interweaving of the sacred masculine and sacred feminine that's been happening since the beginning of the year. And it is continuing now here because Venus comes through first and then Mars jumps, drops into the middle of the, the Uranus North node conjunction. So all of this future building energy has the goddess and the god, the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, both deeply involved in how these energies are going to move through us and, and feel for us. Um, and Venus coming through first is asking us to engage with love, beauty, enjoyment, pleasure. It's and, and this calmness that I was just speaking about, okay, groundedness, because Venus is at home in Taurus, so she she uh, mirrors the same kind of energies as Taurus and to connect with our highest integrity and values as we move through the intensity of July and August. She's coming through first and laying down this love, beauty, pleasure, calmness, okay, highest integrity, um, uh, foundational energies here before all the big intensity starts up. So fascinating. And this is a really good thing to have her balancing, beautifying, calming influence here. And so 
Um, when Mars comes through on August 1st and 2nd, um, he's coming to these points. It's the sacred masculine coming to these points where the sacred feminine has already walked. And so this really opens the portal for a new, more evolved, more high consciousness interplay between the masculine and feminine, both personally, as well as on the larger world stage. Uh, it opens the door for rapid and unexpected breakthroughs with Uranus involved for the masculine feminine balance in our world. So I'm very excited and interested to see how this will emerge. This is going to be really beautiful for our relationships, really beautiful for new dynamics. Okay. Much more balanced masculine and feminine coming into our world in some way. So then we have the lion's gate at the same time. And this is incredible. So not only is all of this happening that I just said, okay, at the end of July and beginning of August, but it is coinciding with the lion's gate. Now the lion's gate is kind of our modern, like new agey term for the heliacal rising of the star Sirius. Sirius is a fixed star located at 13 degrees of cancer. And this is, time of year, her heliacal rising, the heliacal rising of this star Sirius, which was called Sothis or Sopdet in the ancient times. This was a major annual event for the people of ancient Egypt and was actually recognized as the beginning of their new year. That's how important it was. So what would happen is that in Egypt, there would be this time of drought and the water in the Nile, the levels of the water would get lower and lower and lower. The crops would be drying out. It would be hard to find water for the people and the animals, et cetera. And then every year when Sirius would have her heliacal rising, which means Sirius rises with the sun at dawn because she's been invisible. She's been traveling through the underworld for, since about May, okay, from mid-May until this time in late July and early August. Late July and early August, one day, they would see star Sirius rising just before the sun at dawn. And at that same time, the Nile River would flood every year and life would return to their land. And so they saw that star Sirius as the mother goddess Isis, bringing her nurturing milk and her sustenance and her life force back to the people so that they could continue to live, so that the life force is returned to the plants, the animals, the land, the people, everything. I have chills every time I talk about that. It's just, it's so powerful. And it was all, would always be aligned with the heliacal rising of this star. So this is what we now today call the lion's gate. Um, because of the precession of the equinoxes, the date has slightly shifted. So in ancient times, this would occur in mid to late July. Now it occurs generally between August 5th to the 12th. It depends on your latitude. If you're in a higher latitude or a lower latitude, you know that heliacal rising when Sirius appears at dawn will be a slightly different date, but it's all within that general range in early August. So these dates line up with the Uranus North Node conjunction. Oh, it's just incredible um, that, you know, so this was just such a powerful time for the ancient people of life force returning to the land. And now we're having this transit Uranus and the North node. And it is like, we can finally make these changes. We can finally build this future state that we've been longing for, for so long. And we're going to have the support of the heliacal rising of Sirius, we're going to have the support of the mother goddess Isis. As we do this, this year in 2022, it's absolutely huge. Um, so this is a star portal opening time when we can connect with that part of the sky, which includes Sirius. It includes the constellation Orion, which was connected with the, the her Isis's husband, uh, Osiris. Okay. And it also is very close to the Pleiades which is Pleiades is in the late, late degrees of Taurus. So this is a time when vaster possibilities, visions, breakthroughs and understanding, new states of living and being and new perceptions of reality can really come in, enter into our awareness 
And with this Uranus North Node in conjunct conjunction in Taurus transit going on, we can actually really ground these things into reality in surprising ways. We can surprise ourselves with what we're able to accomplish and do and create and become and implement during this time. So the energy of the lion's gate is very much the same as the energy of the Uranus North Node conjunction. So we are just having so much support from all angles in these changes that we need to make. And I just want to pause for a moment here and say, we have to make major changes in our world, politically, educational, uh, uh, medical system, environmental, um, pollution, you know, as far as like chemicals coming into our bodies, like there, there are uh, we all know this so many levels that we are operating that are completely insane, <laughs> really and truly um, what we're doing to ourselves and our planet and the other and the other beings here. We've got to stop. We've got to change. And there is something that can come through during this time that is going to help us actually really make those changes. We haven't been able to. We keep, you know, getting back on the same old patterns. And the world is trying to help us to change. And there is some massive event that's going to happen here. I believe it's going to really help us make that change. Um, this is, you know, the Helico Rising of Sirius is about the sacredness of life itself. So that energy is infused here in with this Uranus and North Node and Mars conjunction, a return to the sacredness of life itself. And if you are interested in these kinds of topics, I just wanted to share with you this beautiful free gift. You will find the link in the description field below. Um, I really hope you will enjoy this wonderful free gift. It is a video that I recorded called Awaken Your Connection with Ancient Egypt, Find Your Power in the Magic of Long Ago. And it can be found on my website at this link here, which will be in the description field below. And this is a fascinating exploration of ancient Egypt where you will learn and experience everything you see here on the slide um, about the role of the goddess Ma'at, natural order and cosmic law, the mysteries of Osiris and the profound understandings that the ancient Egyptians had about the nature of life and death. And what this means for us today, and this is really tied into upholding the sacredness of life, remembering, reaffirming, coming back into connection in our modern world today, with the sacredness of life that the ancient people and including the ancient Egyptians and indigenous people throughout all time have always held as the highest priority. How do we return to that? So um, this is really powerful. I hope you, you will all go and claim that free gift and really enjoy it. Before we close, there's one more piece here about this, these transits in July and August that are very important to note. Um, so that is that the South nodes in Scorpio, we've talked a lot about the North node. And again, the North node is about our future, the direction we are moving toward for our highest evolution and that which we want and need to bring into our lives that we want to expand or attract to ourselves. Now the South node is always opposite the North node and the South node represents the past represents that which we need to move away from for our highest evolution and that which we want or need to release and let go of from our lives. So while all of this activity is happening in Taurus and the North Node and Uranus and Mars are in Taurus, we're going to have the South Node moving through Scorpio. And all of those big transits I've been talking about this whole time are opposing the sign of Scorpio. So Scorpio is very energetically entangled with all of this. The South node, of course, is very, very much involved in what we're doing through the North node. And this Scorpio South node, South node is stripping us of all that is no longer aligned. Now, this has been happening most strongly since November, 2021, when we had the first eclipse on the Taurus Scorpio axis. And it's going to continue to be very, very strong through June of 2023. And so I invite you right now, definitely right in the chat, have a lot of things fallen away from your life since November, 2021? I would guess that they have. So I would love to know in the chat, what is the biggest thing that you have released during this time frame? Or maybe you haven't made that release yet, but you know what it is and you know what you've got to let go of. Maybe it's a relationship, a career, a belief system, a, a pattern or a habit you have that's not serving you, whatever it is, write it in the chat. I would love to know. And, and we can really have like camaraderie and community support all around the world for this because we're all going through this 
in very intense ways right now. So this falling away process that the South Node in Scorpio is insisting upon at this time is really forcing us to release everything that holds the energy of the past. We've got to let it go. We've got to clear out that space so we can have room to welcome in the new things that are going to hold the energy of the future, that are going to allow us to really be birthed into a new future. And this is exactly how the nodes work. We're asked to clear out around this, the themes of the South Node to make space so we can move into the direction of the North Node. Now, in this case, we are clearing out around Scorpio themes. So this is trauma, pain, fear, woundings, um, anything we've been clinging to too tightly, um, anything we've kept hidden or tried to push down, all of that's got to be cleared. Okay, all of that Scorpio stuff has got to be cleared. And then this is so we can move into the direction of the North Node. And the North Node in Taurus is very much about building a stable and strong foundation. Okay, and taking good care of the earth and taking good care of our bodies and enjoying life, enjoying this physical existence, um, finding joy and pleasure in the bird song and in the sunrises and sunsets and these simple things in an amazing cup of coffee, you know, <laughs> like really slowing down, simplifying and enjoying where we are. And so we're going to be very encouraged to clear out the South Node so we can enjoy this incredible journey we're on. And this, you know, Taurus is of course, very, very much about life itself. It's about the earth. It's about all of the creatures that come from the earth that are the children of the earth, humans included. Um, but also including the birds and the trees and the species that we've been harming, the rivers and the mountains, you know, very much included here in Taurus. So it is about coming into a very, very new connection with all of these forms of life around us, remembering the sacredness of life around us. So with the South Node being in Scorpio, um, coming back to that, this is amazing for our healing process because it is this massive chance to clear out pain, trauma, wounding, fears, all of those nasty things. But because they're all going to be brought up for us to be healed, it can feel extremely difficult and even scary on a day-to-day -day level. So it's like big picture. Yes. Amazing. Massive healing. <laughs> okay. But actually dealing with that and navigating, like taking care of the children and going to work while all this is going on is, is hard. So just love and, and you know, solidarity with all of you out there. We are all going through this. We're being hit with releasing one thing after another, after another. And just know that you are purifying. You are being purified by this South Node in Scorpio on all levels. You are being invited and giving the, the force and the courage to clear out all that is not true to who you are becoming, right? We, we are becoming something very different now than who we used to be. So this clearing has got to get rid of all that's not true. And we're also clearing out heavy burdens that we've been carrying. Um, we're clearing out things we've been clinging to for too long. We're clearing out identities or ideas of who we are that are no longer accurate, or maybe they were never even accurate to begin with, but we believed in them for 20 years, you know, and now we're finally realizing, wow, that label that my, you know, parent or teacher or somebody put on me when I was 12 has nothing to do with who I really am. I am ready to let that go and move on with what is true to me, right? These are the, I mean, this is major, major shifts happening at this time within us and, and in our world. So we're releasing relationships, careers, homes, friends, belief systems. I mean, this is why it can feel really scary because it's this, it's this whole thing where that which we thought was stable and secure is being rocked, is falling away. So just know that all of this is falling away to make space for who you are becoming. And it's happening on these really deep levels. So take heart, trust, and surrender into this process. It is truly happening for our highest evolution. And you are going to be changed and shifted so deeply by all of this in 2022. When you get to mid or late 2023 and look back, you are going to have these moments of just really incredible, beautiful recognition of just how different you are now, just how much more highly evolved, highly conscious, high frequency you have become by that point in time. So hold on for the ride. It is all for our highest evolution and um, really 
all of this is supporting us to build a completely new future, a, a future that is very different than what we've been experiencing, very different from what we can even imagine. And this is really going to get ramped up in July and August. So um, just again, sending love and blessings to, to all of you out there as we go through this together, as we move through it together. Now, if you've enjoyed this presentation, please do leave me a comment. Let me know what resonated most for you and how these energies are showing up uniquely in your life. Tell me a little bit of your story. Like what, how is this showing up for you? And be sure to like, and subscribe so that you won't miss the future astrology updates that I'm going to share with you. There is so much more really exciting stuff coming up throughout 2022 that I'll be sharing. So be sure to subscribe and like this video. It helps me get it out to more and more people and hopefully help to amplify this, this, this massive shift in consciousness that's happening at this time. And be sure to check out my website. It is wearesacredplanet.com. And especially check out my online courses. Many of them are free or donation based. I am really putting these courses out there based on sacred economics and based on um, together, we are here to change the world and financial situations should not be any restricting force or any limitation on that. So go check those out. It's at wearesacredplanet.com backslash on online hyphen courses. And these links will also be in the description field below. And just thank you so much, everybody, for tuning into this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been fun to watch. And I'm sending you all so much love. Can't wait to share my next uh, presentation with you in a few days. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all.